I'd like to welcome everyone to the third in our series of four town hall meetings. If you recall, we had one in April, and that was on the survey results. We had one in July, and that was on the budget. This is the third, and we will have another one on Monday, January 26th at 3 in the afternoon, and that will be on food and beverage and how we stack up against our peers, everything you want to know about food and beverage and how we budget for it. And so I welcome you to come to that one as well. This is part of our series because we have a commitment to good governance practices, communicating with you about some new items when we have them, and uh, we want to listen to you too. So this will be one of those meetings where we're going to ask you to uh, tell us what you're thinking and ask us questions. It's a program that we have that's split into two parts. The first part will be Charlie and Dr. Uh, Len Wishart speaking on the mission and vision and core values that have been developed as a proposal. And then the second part I'll turn over to Tim and his staff and they will talk to us about what's going on this season, what things we can look forward to, and um, how they're going to make this season one of our best. So thank you all for coming and I'll turn it over to Charlie. Thank you, Marie. Um, the, the normal reminders I probably should give out if it would be a good time now to turn off your phone. I turned off my phone, but I left my iPad on so I could still get my emails. Um, this is, um, as, as Marie said, this is the, the third of our town halls, and this is um, the first half of today's session um, is to uh, put a proposal out in front of the entire membership uh, in that regard, the meeting today is being uh, videoed and will be made available to the whole membership. And to solicit your feedback as to what uh, the group came up with as a proposal for our club's uh, vision for the future, uh, defining our mission, establishing our core values. That's what this is about. Um, we would uh, welcome feedback, not necessarily today, but you're more than welcome on a Q&A at the end of our presentation. But think about it. Um, material, Tim, will be on the website on all of this. Uh, it is in the uh, Strategic Planning Committee meeting uh, minutes that are up on the website. And uh, we hope to get the feedback. We have a board meeting tomorrow. All tomorrow we'll be doing is reporting on today. And then we have a Strategic Planning Committee meeting in uh, November, and then we have a board meeting in November. We'd like to hopefully adopt some version of what you're going to see today uh, for the, uh, uh, at the November meeting so that we still uh, have it adopted uh, this uh, year, especially this season. Because as we'll say at the end, um, if what we do is develop these statements and put them on the wall somewhere and forget about them, then we failed. What, what I'll be saying at the end of this uh, uh, presentation is that what we adopt today should govern, should guide, should lead, should inform every decision that every committee makes in a recommendation up to the board and should inform and guide every decision the board makes. This is really, really important stuff. Um, we have a vision statement. Um, it started with the very first board here after turnover, and I'm reading from uh, President Brooks's first uh, uh, president's report, and there was at that time a long-range planning committee, and I believe it was headed by Dan Froman, and they developed a vision statement for Stonebridge Country Club. This is right at the beginning when I think Immokalee Road was two lanes maybe, maybe, maybe four. Um, we had a clubhouse with no bar, and uh, we had a golf uh, course with a, I think we had, I, was, I remember it, we had a, a cart path running down the middle of the first fairway. It was a long time ago. But they developed a vision, and uh, it was to continue to be a premier residential country club community, to provide uh, our owners a beautiful financially stable community, to maintain our property values, while preserving and promoting an ever-expanding congenial lifestyle and to accommodate owners of all ages and interests. Now, General Wishard, when he 
takes over the rest of the, uh, the presentation, will tell you the exercises that occurred uh, later on in, in 2010 and 11 when he was chairing the Strategic Planning Committee, where the initial vision of the club was, uh, was, was changed slightly. It was put into a different format, but the basic concepts um, uh, stood. And then, of course, what happened in the interim and, and kind of why we're at, where we're at now, two major items and a bunch of other important items, but the two major items were the renovation, the $2 million renovation of the golf course and the six-something million dollar uh, rebuilding of our clubhouse. So we have a completely different set of amenities here than we may have had back at the beginning when Mr. Brooks and Mr. Froman st and, and his team st uh, developed the initial vision of Stonebridge. So, how do I use this? Click a button. So the Strategic Planning Committee, <coughs> this is the committee. They were all involved. They all had input. Um, they've, done, they've done really a good job. We've done, I think, we will do three major things this year. The first thing we did is we responded, as you recall, to the survey. And we helped uh, develop guidance so that the department heads here and the committee chair and the board could interpret the survey results and um, focus on, as we came to call them, the three big issues that the members said were in need of some sort of an improvement. Uh, then we took on this task, which is the, the, the vision, mission, and, and value statement development. Remember, the Brooks Group developed a vision statement. Uh, we, to this day, do not have a mission statement, and we haven't really solidified our core values. So that's what we're doing in this exercise. Um, and then what we'll do for the rest of the year, among other things that uh, will come up, is we will take the strategic plan, which is on the website, was developed under General Wishart's leadership over his three years as chairman, and we do an annual exercise of updating the strategic plan um, for changes that have occurred. So that, that's what this committee is doing. I'd like to mention specifically three names that are up on the, uh, up on the screen, although they're all important. Uh, we formed a subcommittee uh, within the Strategic Planning Committee to really dive into this exercise. And they did, they did a wonderful job all through the summer, um, including peer, peer club comparisons, looking at other looking at other clubs uh, who have undertaken this uh, exercise. Uh, General Wishard will explain the process, but he chaired the, the subcommittee, and on the committee were Hal Hills and, and uh, Carolyn Bowling. Uh, Carolyn is here, and Hal is here. So they deserve an awful lot of credit. They brought um, a, uh, a product to the full committee, and uh, you know, we did the typical classic wordsmithing for, I think, a total of about 75 emails. Um, but everybody is in agreement that what we are presenting to you now is, is, is we think, a pretty good product. So um, what I'd like to do now is turn it over to, to uh, Len Wishard. Len, of course, uh, served uh, as president of the association. He also served as chairman of the Strategic Planning Committee for three a uh, full year. So, Len, if you could come up and take over, thanks. You know, I'm uh, dangerous with this. Uh, is this on? Yeah, I guess I am. Yeah, well, it's the right hand, which depends on which way I turn it. So, uh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh oh. As, as many of you know, I have a tendency either to go backwards or to dump the whole program when I get one of these, so I'm a little dangerous. I'll try to be careful because er I noticed that Eric is not around to save me, but uh, <laughs> in any event, uh, okay, thanks, Charlie. Uh, yes, uh, what we did is we started, and I'll see, I pushed the right one and I'm not getting anything. <laughs> the other right. There we go. Charlie read to you what the uh, one was back in 2002 that was adopted. Basically, this is much the same. We, what we did is we tried to pull it apart a little bit to have a, a concise statement at the front end that we could publicize. We, you, 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 many of you have seen it on the website, have seen it on the top of The Voice and other places. And then we pulled out the, what were originally three sub-bullets and uh, combined them in a different way. Not that it's important, but the point really was we were working the strategic plan. 
And we used those four strategic goals, as we call them, as the basis then for the development of the major objectives within that strategic plan. All 15 of those major objectives were tied to one or more of the goals. So the whole notion was tied together to, to work through the vision into the strategic plan. And so as we move forward, and this is a good time to do that, as Charlie has indicated with what's occurred over the uh, past uh, four or five years since uh, we, did <coughs> we made these changes, uh, this is the time now to be looking again at how we address the strategic plan, and we should do so from the vision and the mission and the, and the goals that we've established and the values that we've provided for ourselves. So what's changed? Charlie's hit a number of those things already. Uh, in addition to uh, the golf course, the clubhouse, the fitness center, and things like that, was the survey. We really spent some time in the subcommittee to look carefully at what the survey told us. And they told us some things not only negatively, which we've tended to focus on, but positively, I think. We looked at, and, and you're familiar with the food and beverage issues, the uh, uh, admin services, civility and governance, and the uh, communications. All of those have been highlighted, and Tim has mentioned them at numerous times, as has Marie. And they'll continue to be addressed. But more importantly, from our point of view also, was to look at those things that were commented on by members in a positive manner. And they included things like the camaraderie and congeniality that people experience here. You, you scratch most of us and ask us why we're here and we talk about the friendliness, the community aspects of our, of our uh, uh, location here. We talk about that more than we do about its location and, and other positives that we have. But they commented on that. They commented on the value that uh, we tend to receive, that we feel that we receive for our uh, participation and membership here in Stonebridge. And they talked about uh, the, the, uh, uh, the benefits and, and the pride that they took in our community. So we tried to look at those things and, uh, and talk about uh, uh, what has changed and to look particularly then at this issue of Premier. What did that mean? Uh, it, it's a statement I think that most of us can, can put in our minds and, and address in different ways. We have a different interpretation of what that means. So all of those were, were important as we looked at what it was that uh, has changed and why we ought to be relooking at the vision, the mission, and, and the values. And those finally is that bottom line. All good outfits do that at some point in time and reassess where they are. So what was the process? I'm not going to bore you with a lot of detail. Uh, again, Charlie has commented on a few of those things, but the subcommittee then was asked to do the grunt work, uh, to go through, spend their time this past summer uh, with a series of reviews and research of the various activities to look at ways that uh, th those things that were important in the development of a vision and then the ultimate, uh, ultimately as well the mission uh, which executes uh, and tries to accomplish what the, what the vision has in store and then develop the, uh, the values. At the conclusion of that, we turned it over to the Strategic Planning Committee, and uh, Charlie's given you the details of the 75 emails that uh, transpired. So what were the guiding principles we came up with? Uh, Future-oriented, the vision, should look to the future. The current one talks about continuing to be, which kind of puts a foot in the present and a foot into the, pre into the future. Uh, should be concise, but most importantly, it's what we aspire to be. It should, an inspi should be an inspiring statement and should be, indicate where we want to be, what we want to be. The mission statement, on the other hand, is what we do. It ought to describe what it is that we do that, and, and move us in the direction of the aspiration that we've set for ourselves. Then come the values. They define our character. What is it, who are we, and how do we act in, in the execution of those activities that both the board, management, and all of us collectively uh, put forth within, within our community? So those together, then, are the things that we should be looking at when we, before we even started trying to put together words on, a, on paper as to what that vision, that mission, and those values ought to be. So where did we get to? You've all seen this. We sent this out early. You, you know our bottom line as to what we thought were appropriate for our vision, mission, and uh, statements, and our core values. I've left off the lead-in phrase in, uh, on core values there, which basically will say what I've already <coughs> said. They're the things that are important to us in executing what we do and the activities that we undertake. Uh, and they're the things that we should be protecting and defending uh, and, and holding most important to us in, in all of our uh, activities. Give you a moment on that. 
And it gets us then to our bottom line. We're not talking, when we talk about relaxed elegance, we're not, we understand who we are and who we aren't. We're kind of a little bit more laid back, but what we do should be done with quality. What we do, whatever we execute, ought to be something that we're proud of. It should be done with excellence. And we should be doing it in a manner that pays attention to uh, uh, the fiscal re uh, responsibilities that we have so that what we get out of what we do has some value to us. And the bottom line is we are Stonebridge, and that's what we've been proud of. That's what people tell us that they like about the community, and we are the friendliest community in southwest Florida and intend to be. With that, Charlie, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Len. Before we get to the uh, opening it up to the floor for members, let me go back to the statements and um, just talk a minute about, well, Len mentioned quickly, he, he goes so quick and I go so slow. Um, Len mentioned uh, all of the work they did and the research that the committee did all summer. And one of the things they did is a peer group comparison. And um, this is really an update of what Lens Group did back in 2010 and 2011. And, and this comes up for a variety of reasons, including, you know, getting, you know, some of the best employees that you can possibly get in Florida. So who are your, who are your peer clubs? And they went through an exercise. They have a paper. I won't read the whole thing. But Stonebridge competes on several levels with other clubs in Naples and southwest Florida. We're in competition for members new residents through home sales were in competition for employees and managers for the quality and the, of the amenities offer and for reputation. Um, there's, there has been a tendency to compare ourselves with bundled <coughs> golf communities of which there's about 28 in the area. But the committee came, the subcommittee came up to the conclusion that as a bundle club, uh, uh, other bundle clubs in the area constitute prime candidates as there are peers, but some private clubs that have other similarities were also considered for likely candidates. They also worked with the MacArthur Group and they uh, started out with 27 clubs. They whittled it down and whittled it down further. And what they came up with, and this is important for, uh, for committees and for boards, uh, we're not, we don't have it on a sheet here, but I'll just read out who the committee concluded are our peer clubs and you'll You'll, you'll note by its absence, there's no Gray Oaks and there's no Royal Point Siena because we've heard that in, in committee and board de de deliberations. What are you going to do? What are you trying to make us a Gray Oaks? The peer clubs were Copperleaf, Forest Glen, Naples Lake, Spring Run, Vanderbilt, Vasari, Worthington, and Pelican Sound. Those are all bundled. And then three private clubs were considered our peers for this type of consideration, and that was Bears Paw. The Country Club of Naples and Kensington. So whether that list is exactly right or exactly wrong, they do have a bunch of metrics to compare Stonebridge with those other clubs. But it is, it is, uh, it is worthwhile to just know what the group went through to come up to, uh, to help inform what they ended up with the product, which is up on the board here. Um, what I'd like to conclude with before we get to the questions is now, once we get the feedback, and you can either do it through your questions and answers here now, or you can email um, Tim, or you can email me. Um, I've recently installed a private server in my basement. <laughs> um, no one will see it, uh, ever. Um, but give us your feedback. But whatever we end up adopting at the board, either in hopefully in, in November or maybe in January, Whenever we adopt this, it's got to be used. And I'll just quote a couple of, uh, uh, of folks, Copland, uh, Copland and Keebler and Global Club Advisors, their club consultants, Copland and Keebler, you may have heard of. They were the group that was instrumental in, in bringing, helping Tim find Ben to bring him to Stonebridge. Um, but they've written about this process and they've said in the end it's about execution, execution, execution. And your mission statement and vision statement needs to be part of everything you do, everything you do. You've got to put it on the front page of your board and committee books, on the tagline in your newsletter, on your emails, at the front door of your clubhouse, on the employee business cards, on your member statements. And it must be the measure against which all your decisions are made. So think of an example. If you're sitting in a boardroom 
and some information comes up. And the question is, do the members have to really know that? Well, you look at what your core value is. Look at the last one, communication. Promote transparency through clear, honest, and open communication. So if you're having a debate whether some information should go to the members or not, you got to think of your core value, and it should be on every board member's table for every board meeting. Do we have to keep, keep this from the members or not? Well, that would be against our core value. Now, this is, this is, this is how you do it. Respect. Mutual respect among members, management, and staff. It's important they included everybody. It's members dealing with members. It's members dealing with staff. Mutual respect. So if an incident, and there have been incidences, especially, Ben, before you got here, and the food and beverage thing really got better, but there were some problems with bad service, and members would perhaps take it out inappropriately on a staff member. If we all thought of the first core value that we've got, which is respect, then maybe you know, we'd, we'd hold that back. Another consultant in the not-for-profit field, and, and she is the guru across, in the whole country, received the President's Award. She says, put these three statements in practice. And here's some examples. First, she says, um, they're not simply for hanging on your lobby or putting on your letterhead. These are practical tools that will help your board govern towards creating more impact for your community. Here are a few ways. Begin every board meeting with the three statements. Remind everybody of why we're really here. Board meetings have a tendency to quickly dive into the million small items that need to be addressed. By starting every meeting with just a few moments to reflect on these three statements, you're setting a tone and a context. Have the three statements available at the board table and at all committee meetings. Everything you do should be done in, con in concert with this. Everything you do. Um, use, uh, uh, ask the question, ask for each and every important decision of the board, how do these fit into our vision for the future of the community? Well, you've got to know what your vision is before, before you act. Um, use the three statements uh, in your organization's planning. Uh, the most influential decisions your organization will make happen during your annual planning sessions. And don't forget that budgeting, gift, don't forget this, budgeting is, is planning as well. Your budget is the financial plan for the coming year. We're, the place where plans will either become reality or will die for lack of inclusion in the budget. When it's time to determine goals for the coming year, how will these goals fit into the future that you want to create? Use the value statements to evaluate your general manager. Evaluating your COO based on what, you, what, they, what they did is easy. We tally up everything the CEO was directed to do. But if your CEO knows that he or she will also be evaluated based on whether or not he or she adhered to your value statement, you will then be able to measure whether she, whether she did the work, but how that work was done. And finally, use these statements to evaluate the board's own performance throughout the year. It's a rare board that takes the time to evaluate itself. And, you know, we don't do that here or any other country club. A board turns over in February and it's a new board. But maybe one of the last things we should do, we, we list our accomplishments at the committee level and at the board level, but do we ever go through an exercise to find our shortcomings? And that's where you use these to measure up, how did we perform as a board? And that's all part, to get back to the original thing that Marie said, it, it's in response to the survey and it's in response to good governance. So I will tell you, uh, I'm running long and I'm gonna shut up, but I will tell you, when Marie uh, was elected president and gave the um, committee assignments out, and I had to give up, frankly, the only thing I like, which is greens, I was disappointed. I mean, that's, all I, that's what I do. And it took me a little while to get comfortable with this. But now, with the help of General Wisher, this is so important. And that's what the, the point we're trying to, to convey, that this will not just be put up on the wall. If, if we do this right, this will govern, th these guiding principles will govern everything that this community does and get us to be the friendliest country club community in Southwest Florida, continuing to provide a uh, setting of relaxed elegance and unsurpassed value. So that's the, what it is, how we did it, and what we're gonna do with it. And with that, if I press the right button,
we'll open it up to questions. Um, so please. That's either an indication that you've all got your secret e e emails tuned into Hillary Clinton's testimony, um, or this was okay. But think about it. Send us uh, comments. Please embrace it. Talk, talk, talk to your friends about it. Um, I think it's just a great job, Len, so thank you very much. And the reason I'm sure you're all here is to hear the second half of the presentation, and that's to, to hear what's great for Stonebridge this upcoming season directly from the, 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 the great team that, 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 that Tim has assembled here. So I'll turn it over to our general manager, Tim Jones. Thank you very much, Mr. Murphy. I would like to start off with not only thanking the management team, but the entire team here at Stonebridge. We have a great team that we've put together, and I'm sure Eric can remember, uh, I've, I started in 98 years past, summers used to be slow, and you had plenty of time to kind of relax, and summers are a bit different now. We're a little busier. This past summer, we have had an incredible summer, and I'm sure some of these gentlemen will, will speak to that. It's been a very busy summer, not only operationally, uh, but preparing for the coming season. Uh, the member survey that we did in March of 2015 told us a lot about areas that we could seek to improve. So this summer we've put a lot of effort into making sure we can show improvements in those areas. And I'm actually looking forward to doing another survey this year on the three areas that specifically uh, showed to need improvement, which would be in food and beverage, leadership, and administration. So in late, mid-late March, we're going to do another survey in 2016 so we can really benchmark against where we've come. Um, putting together the management team that we have is a big part of that, so we're going to give each of those individuals a chance to speak briefly today um, to tell you a little bit about what's coming up for, the, for this season. Um, the, the, other, the other group I want to thank is you, the members, of course. Uh, first off, to thank you for your patience and cooperation this past season. Uh, the 2015 season with a brand new facility and a lot of new employees uh, did serve to have some challenges. So I appreciate everyone's cooperation and understanding as we've continued to grow. So um, as you'll see today, we're confident we're going to have uh, probably uh, what will be, not probably, what will be our best season yet. So uh, we'll let the team speak a bit more about that. Um, <coughs> When we introduce, when I introduce each of the department heads, I'll also acknowledge the chair of the committee that they work closely with. And at the end, we'll have an open Q&A. Uh, management, as well as applicable chairs where necessary, will address questions, comments, feedback, any information you have is certainly welcome. And most importantly, we're going to have the bar open uh, for happy hour. So as soon as we wrap up with the Q&A, we'll have the bar open just for you all. So please stay and, and join us at the bar. So with that, I will start with uh, the first uh, department head, our newest addition, one of our newest additions to the team, Ben Elwell. He's our clubhouse manager, and he works closely with the House Committee, and the chair of the House Committee is Gail Howie, who is here today. So Ben, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Tim. I'm really glad to be here at Stonebridge Country Club. I've Speaking to what you said about the summers, I've been in uh, four private clubs now in Naples over the last 15 years, and this is the most patronized club I've seen in the offseason by far. It's not close, so it's a, it's a testament to what uh, you all feel about your, your club and your community, so it's, it's noticed from the outside. Um, before I start, about this start talking about this season, I'd like to give a little update on what's happened in the last uh, eight weeks since I've been here. Uh, in response to the member survey last spring, uh, an intensive training program has been implemented and uh, the first phase has been complete. Uh, started on August 24th, about two weeks after I started here. And uh, a lot of these things we did started with crafting a mission and core values for the food and beverage department specifically, like what uh, Mr. Murphy was speaking to uh, for what you're doing right now for the club. And uh, that is what's guided us uh, in every standard and system that we're putting in now. 
uh, and that mission is to achieve uh, consistent hospitality excellence. And uh, the most important core value that we have is uh, a commitment to continuous improvement. So obviously as things are getting better, uh, you can expect to see them improve uh, even more. Uh, we know that we're not finished, so uh, it's, uh, it's an exciting time, I think, for the club and for, uh, for the members here. <clears throat> I'd like to also speak a little bit about the organizational chart for the department, which has changed a little bit. Um, of course, you all know uh, Jim Breton. He's still our uh, executive chef here at the club. Thank you, Jim. And He's obviously the head of our uh, culinary team, and uh, our newest addition is our uh, new food and beverage service manager, Jake Lowell, who may, some of you may or may not have met. Thank you, Jake. I brought Jake over from, uh, from the Strand, uh, where he worked with me over the last few years, so excited to have him as part of the team. Um, that being said, I would like to get into a little bit of news about the upcoming season for 2016. Uh, I'm going to give you a little preview of something we haven't completely uh, ironed out all the details on yet, but we have uh, a Saturday evening event series that we're, is in development right now, and this is going to add about uh, nine dates to a, an already quite robust social and dining calendar. So I'm really excited about that. We're working on some really uh, upscale and high-end events. You can expect to see some uh, wine dinners, which are uh, showcase events that I feel are hugely important to really show off uh, the skills of the culinary team, the F&B staff, and frankly, it's my favorite thing to do you know, in food and beverage, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, also, we're adding some uh, plated dinner dances and a few upscale uh, prefix uh, dinner nights where we're gonna bring in some really high-end products and uh, really let those uh, items shine. We'll throw in some elegant instrumental music from uh, a live musician, and I think those are gonna be just really special, you know, nice for people to get dressed up and enjoy the club, so. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. And next up is Eric Peterson, our head golf professional. And obviously, he works closely with Dan Graziano as the chair of the golf committee. So, Eric. Hello, everyone. Everyone ready for a busy season this year? OK. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about what Tim was talking about the summer. I'll just give you some stats, what happened this year. 2014, which was our busiest May 1st through October ever, we did 6,600 rounds. This was last year. This year, from May 1st to October 22nd, we did over 10,000 rounds. <laughs> 10,000 rounds. I think it was the clubhouse and also Mark, the way he did with the golf course was amazing. So you guys are for such a treat this season, really. really. Uh, things we have coming up, um, first of all, I don't know if you've all been down to the golf shop, but we have all new merchandise. The pro shop down there has a whole new look. We have so many different lines. We have sunglasses, wallets, cologne, Hats, towels, Oakley, Puma, hats, it's so, it's so colorful down there. So if you haven't gone down to the golf shop, I really, really encourage you to do so because it's really impressive. I'm really impressed. And Brian and Sally were a big help this uh, summer, getting the new lines in, meeting with new vendors, looking at new ideas from different golf shops. So it's really, I'm really proud of it down there. I really am. Um, and we're also going to do on December 3rd, in the past, we've done a Christmas sale. It's lasted a couple of days. This year, we're going to do a Christmas sale on December 3rd. It's from 5 o'clock to 8. What we're going to have is we're going to have entertainment. We're going to have food. And we're actually going to have a glow ball hole on number 18, where you can go out there and hit a shot in the dark. It's going this way, not towards the clubhouse. We're going that way. So it's going to be really neat to have it. Uh, December 3rd, it's going to be our Christmas sale with entertainment and food and everything. It's going to be great. That's what we have to look forward to. Um, next week, we start, or actually in a week and a half, we start our opening Ladies' Day and opening Men's Day. The Ladies' Day is November 3rd, and the Ladies' Nine Holes, November 10th, and the Men's Opening Day is November 4th. Um, we did have a replacement this year for the Ladies. Last year, I don't know if you all remember, his name was Tim Schroyer. 
He helped with uh, Sally with the 18 holers and the 9 holers. This year we brought in, um, Sally was her golf coach when Sally was at graduate school. Her name is Ashley Ward. She'll be starting with us tomorrow. She's going to be helping Sally with the 9 holers and the 18 holers. She is fantastic and um, some of the ladies got to play with her today and uh, Phil played with her the other day. He said he, she hits it a long way. She's like, <laughs> she's like five, four, maybe 80 pounds, 90 pounds. And she's hitting it like 230, 240 yards, Phil's telling me. So she's really good and we're really excited to see her. So please everyone give her a warm welcome when you see her. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about is, you know, the biggest, the most questions I get from everyone is about Chelsea. A lot of questions about Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. So this year we're actually going to do a Chelsea seminar in the beginning of January. January 7th, we're going to do it from 10 to 11 in the morning. Uh, just for any questions about Chelsea, we'll go through like a, this is Dre gave me a Chelsea for Dummies pamphlet today that we might be handing out to everyone. But um, other than that, we're really looking forward to an exciting season and looking forward to seeing you all playing golf. Again, it's going to be really busy, really busy. So. Thank you, Eric. And next up, we have Mark Metzger, our Director of Grounds. Mark works very closely with the Green Committee as well as the Grounds Facilities and Security Committee. And so he works closely with Sandy Fleming on the green side and Bill Postma on the ground side. Mark. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm not much of a public speaker. Um, and I don't have a whole lot of exciting news like these guys do, because I do nothing but grow grass. Um, <laughs> so we did have a very productive summer. But, but you do it well. Uh, we did have a very productive summer. We, you know, our airification process went off without a hitch. Um, our golf course is improving. Every year we're here, we, we, we pick apart our imperfections and, and go after them. Our goal is perfection out here. Unattainable, usually, but we are going after it. Um, and we're looking forward to a great season, too. I think the golf course right now is probably in better shape than it has been in years past heading into season. Uh, we came through August and September with really, really bad weather, but October has been really kind to us. So um, that's golf course-wise. I think we're heading in the right direction there. The, on the common ground side, we had a lot of projects go on this summer. We re-landscaped most of uh, Immokalee Road entrance. Uh, the new Zoysia shot, sod out there looks really nice. The Lagustrums. Albeit a little small right now, we'll be, we'll be growing up uh, taller, we'll be able to form shape those, so we'll have a little more of a defined entrance out there. Uh, we did some additional plantings on airport entrance, and um, right now we're planting annuals and putting out fresh pine straw and trimming palm trees, so we're getting ready for season also. And looking forward to seeing you guys out there beat it up. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. And uh, next up, we have Katie Forden. She's our new membership and communications manager. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped right over Kevin. Uh, Kev Kevin doesn't need the sympathy. He, he should be getting a ribbon, not the sympathy. So we have Kevin, Kevin Spank, our uh, director of tennis and fitness. And of course, he works closely with Nice for so tall. So closely, closely with, with Giff Brown on the Tennis and Fitness Committee. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about this year, too. I think, um, you know, last year with the renovation and everything, it had, what, what was the word we used? Uh, challenges. And uh, I think we, we learned a lot, and I think we have a, a really great staff. That I, I think they're really easy to work with. We help each other out, and, and it's... I think you guys are going to notice it this year that it's going to be much improved over last year. We, we had to learn a lot last year, and, and this year is going to be great. Um, my tennis staff, well, I have everyone back um, uh, with Patty and, and Sh Sharon and Sonny and then uh, Joanne. Um, we did fitness classes last year. We outsourced them, and we had some issues. And one of the things we learned is that we needed someone here full time. Um, so we just recently hired uh, Jeff, Jeff Zink. Jeff, why don't you come on up and stand beside me. For those of you who 
no, Jeff, I'm not going to let him speak till the very last <laughs> second. I'm, I'm going to put him on a time clock. Um, a little bit happy, about our a, happy hour ends at 6, remember, <laughs> so don't, don't give Jeff the mic. Um, as far as our tennis courts, we just had them refurbished uh, about two weeks ago, and then uh, next week we're going to drop our windscreens down, so everything will look perfect in another week or so. Um, everyone's starting to come back and get excited. Everyone's playing really well, and the energy's great. Um, so tennis should be awesome this year. Fitness, um, Jeff's, uh, we're doing a new schedule coming out for uh, November, December in the next couple of days, and he'll have about 20 classes uh, for you to participate in. There's five or six different classes. You can go on the website and see what interests you. Um, the biggest thing that, that Jeff has done on Monday, Tuesday, and Fridays at noon, he's blocked an hour of time to where he's just down there in the fitness center, and anybody can come down and say, I've never exercised before in my life. How do I do this? Where can I learn how to do, get better in this body parts not working for me anymore, what can I do? And, um, I've noticed, I've, I've, some of you I've seen down in the fitness center for the first time ever in the last couple weeks, and it's really great, and I think the entire community will really benefit um, with his expertise and learning how to stay healthier and happier longer. So I think please come down and utilize his expertise. I think it's a great benefit for the club. And uh, we're really happy and proud to have him here. Um, I'm going to give Jeff uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. What's really nice is, is this is my passion. So I'm blessed to be here, and I want to thank everybody for having me. Uh, as far as the 30 seconds go, that's fine. I'll be done here shortly. But really, come down to the fitness center. If you've never touched anything in there before, don't be intimidated at this point. Just come in like you own the place. Don't feel like anybody's watching you. Everybody's watching you, but it's okay. <laughs> but in, in all reality, what was nice is I started, I started training here last season, got to meet most of the people. <coughs> the other night I came to the party expecting to be just like a lot of people in here, and I knew probably two-thirds of everybody here. You just dress up different. <laughs> it's kind of like totally a, uh, okay, hi, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I want everybody from all walks of life. This isn't a fitness center as far as fitness goes. Yesterday, we had a, a 16 people showed up for cherry yoga, okay? Now, that is not a sport. That is a quality of life. So if you feel as if there's something that you can gain from stretching, balance, the whole nine yards, that class right there alone, and we grew it last night by two classes, all right? So it went from one day a week to two. So that's how fast this stuff catches on. It's not a sport. The things we do down there is, is purely, and a lot of you have already been to it. I mean, you all, you all have that walk about you when you've come out, and it's like, so you've been to just class, have you? you know? <laughs> but it only hurt, you know, it only burns once. So, you know, just give it a chance. <laughs> You'll never feel that way again, and, and the quality of life is instant. So it's not, I don't have patience. I, it can't last forever. It's got to be like that. So thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to the season. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks, Kevin and Jeff. And now we have Katie. Our latest addition to the team is our membership and communications manager. She works clo closely with Sandy Fleming as the communications and member relations ad hoc committee chair. So, Katie, you tell us what to expect for the season. Oh, my goodness. Good afternoon. How is everybody today? Great. Good. Uh, well, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here at Stonebridge Country Club. I'm loving my time here. I've, what, two months now, I think? Um, and I've finally dug, dug in. I, I think I've got all the things that we need to do, and we're going to make it a great season. This is a great team. Um, I came in, and it was like we automatically were kind of like a family. We all get along really well, and I think that's a, wonder, a wonderful benefit because it reflects back to you. If we work well together, we give you the best service that we can as well, and that's what we're here for. Um, I've been working very closely with the uh, communications to, um, committee, and uh, we've come up with a couple of avenues of communicating uh, with an e-voice, a bridge, 
We've had some hiccups. Um, we've worked through some hiccups with some members. If you have any issues, I'm more than happy to come over to your house and we can see if we can get your computer to where it needs to be. Um, I'm here all the time. We can, we can work through it. <laughs> She's not an IT person. But. <laughs> I can do the website. She, uh, she's been real helpful getting people up on the website. So, And like Eric is going to do a Chelsea seminar when we get uh, the committee and I, we're going to work toward getting a time where we can have a uh, website training seminar here as well. Um, we are trying to communicate all of the events and activities. As one of the gentlemen had mentioned, you guys do a lot. You guys really, really have a full calendar. And we're doing our best to get you all that information so you have it available as well. We have things in the, in, in the um, community membership office, down below, flyers. We're working on the bulletin boards down, downstairs. There's always areas where we can improve the communication. And I call me if you have an idea. I'd love to hear it. Uh, the other things that we're, I'm working on is revamping the new homeowner and rental packets that we hand out. There's a lot of uh, information uh, that I think would be useful for new homeowners and renters to make their transition smoother. So we're going to work on that this year as well. And um, uh, working closely with the events coordinator uh, so that we, again, a smoother transition with all the events and activities because last year I think, um, you know, it was all new for everybody as well. Uh, and we are doing Toys for Tots this season. Forgot to add that in my e-blast this morning. Toys for Tots. Thank you very much, Katie. Last but not least is Stephanie Olaf. She's our controller, and she works very closely with Giff Brown, who's the chair of the finance committee, as well as the treasurer of the board. Stephanie. I'm not as exciting as the rest of the team here, but I just have some important information accounting related. Um, we now accept payment on your statement with the credit card, so that's something new now. We've got a link on the Stonebridge website, and the address, website address is on your statements. We do use a third party to process that, and they do charge a fee, just so you're aware, 2.5%. And the other item that's new here in accounting is we rolled out a paperless statement initiative. And the attempt there is to reduce costs and be environmentally friendly. Um, so just to give you an idea, it's the average cost to send out a member charge statement is about a dollar, and to send out the quarterly packet, it's about $2. Um, so we're just trying to bring you aware that we do have email statements with ticket detail, so that might be something that you like to see on a monthly basis. If you're interested in the emails, contact accounting, and you can start that immediately. And the last item is just a reminder, we do have automatic payment um, through ACH. So if that's something you'd be interested in, you still receive statements, and the draft would come out about the 15th of the month. Um, so, if, again, if you're interested in that, the forms are on the website, and you can contact accounting as well for the further information. And that's all I have for this upcoming season. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you to the whole management team. I would honestly say that I would put this management team against the finest of any club in Southwest Florida. Not just a bundle club, as we talked about. I mean, any, any club, any community in Southwest Florida. We have an awesome team put together, and it's going to be, like I said, the best season we've ever had. With that being said, if anyone has any questions, comments, feedback. There's a question already. This wasn't planned. No, it is not. Um, at my other house, uh, the golf course, I wondered if we could do something that they do up there, which is a, perhaps a tournament at the end of the season, which would be the, the groundskeeper's revenge. We could have Mark and Tim and Eric work on something in April, maybe? Is there a room in the schedule? We could certainly look into it. Like I said, it's a pretty full calendar. We, we do... Men, men's closing day, oh, the, some of the department heads. We don't get to do it. No. I see. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, play, I'll play with the ladies. I'll, I'm not afraid. I'll play with the ladies. 
I, I have I have a hard enough time playing with the guys, but if uh, if I break a hundred, I'm happy. So, any questions from the crowd? Yep. If you want to come on up, we have a microphone right on a stand up here. My question is for Mark. I'm interested in knowing what you have planned and for the future for the water and the fountains and everything at the Amokley entrance. I heard some chatter about it, but uh, I know there's some things that can and should be done. I was curious if you have plans for that at this point. That's, that's, um, I'm pretty loud. Uh, <laughs> that's been in discussion for a while now. Um, I, I don't, that's probably a better question for Tim to answer. The, I know the, the fountain, we maintain the fountain and, the, and we cl chlorinate the water up there, which is not good for our annuals when the wind blows. So uh, I'm, I'm all in favor for looking at a different plan too. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, there's nothing on the immediate uh, future as far as a plan for that fountain. Uh, Mark has expressed a lot of concern about it because it does, the chlorine does kill those annuals that are right around that bed. So we've kicked around some different ideas, um, maybe a different configuration, different fountain pattern, getting rid of the piece in the middle, maybe a waterfall, but nothing. We've just talked ideas. Nothing has been um, really been in a, in a situation that we're proceeding with. Any other questions? Everyone's antsy for happy hour. <laughs> Question. <laughs> uh, is there any plans to do a bocce ball court and R, well not and R, and a shuttle bus that goes around Winding Oaks and picks up and delivers to the clubhouse? So the questions were about bocce and a possible shuttle bus. Um, let's start with the shuttle bus. <laughs> the, um, there's been discussion about that uh, because of the parking challenges that we have at the clubhouse, especially on some of the busier days. Uh, in fact, this season, on a number of days, we're going to have to plan to have valet. Uh, particularly Thursdays tend to be a very busy day for whatever reason. And uh, so there will be times we'll have to have valet just to take care of the volume of cars that come in. Uh, there was some thought about a, like a trolley or something to go around and pick up. Um, that hasn't progressed any more than a fountain. It's just been discussion at this point. Uh, as far as the bocce, bocce question, uh, there has been some interest. Uh, there was a question in the member survey about that, and there were a good number of people that responded to the question, although the, uh, analyzing the results is a little bit difficult based on the way the question was posed. Um, even the gentleman that conducted the survey made a point that you shouldn't present something unless it's presented with the cost factor, you know, what the capital expense would be, what the <coughs> maintenance cost would be, and, it, and the question wasn't posed that way either. Uh, one thing that we've looked at is the potential of maybe a temporary type of a setup. Um, Vanderbilt does a setup on their uh, tennis courts, I guess, where they, of course, it would impact tennis, but where they have bocce events over there. So that's something we're looking into. That would obviously greatly impact the tennis operation or could impact the tennis operation, I say. Uh, so the Tennis and Fitness Committee is going to be charged with looking into that further. So that's where it is right now back. And, and any initiative like that, the, the proper channel is it runs up through a committee before it gets to the board. So tennis and fitness will be taking it from here. Anyone else? All right, let's head to the bar. Thank you for coming. <laughs>